Welcome to Yin Yoga. I'm Andrea Trank. I'm a certified health coach and a registered yoga teacher with a lot of experience in therapeutic styles of yoga. I'm also a heart math clinician, which is a technique to help you reduce your feelings of anxiety and go back into more coherence and become emotionally balanced. I work with Take Lessons. I am um, on their website, and I'm available to do private lessons. I also can work with, you know, if you have a group with you, I can do a retreat for you. I can also, um, I also run some Zoom classes from my home, and thank you, Maria, for putting my link up, how you can reach me. And um, Yin is a really unique kind of yoga practice. If you've never tried yin before, it's not anything like the typical yoga practice. In a regular yoga practice, you might do 30 or 40 poses in a sequence by the time you're done. When we're doing yin, at most we'll do maybe seven poses because each pose we get into, we get in there and we stay and we stay. And so there's four principles of yin I'd like for you to know. The first principle is we get into the shape, and I will guide you through there, to what's called the first point of resistance. And when you get to that first point of resistance, that's your first edge. And then you notice how it feels. Sensation should be no more than a mild, dull ache not gravitate toward anything sharp, stabbing, or burning. So in other words, if you've gotten to what you thought was your first edge and you're feeling pain, you got to back off. The second principle is to try to relax or soften the target area. When your muscles either get fatigued or relax, the stress will transfer to the deeper connective tissues of your body. So that those are tissues like they're called fascia and fascia covers all of your organs and all of your bones and it's underneath the muscles. So you actually have to relax or tire the muscles out to get that deep into the tissues. The third principle is once you get into that pose, you need to commit to remaining still. And obviously you don't wanna remain still if you've gone past your level of sensation or if you're feeling nothing at all. But once you settle into a pose, try to commit to stillness and try to commit to focusing on the sensations there as well as your breath. And lastly, when you release the pose, be sure to release with care. You might feel fragile in your body as the tissue is responding to the stress. So move very slowly and mindfully as you transition. I want to show you one other thing. I'm going to put this up really close to the camera. Okay, this is a little meridian man. And this meridian man is showing the gallbladder line of the meridian. So we're going to be working the gallbladder line. And basically, there are 44 acupuncture points on this line. And when we are stretching and working in yin in a certain way, we're not only working this deep tissue, but we're working the energy channels that connect with organs. And in this case, we're doing the gallbladder. And not just the gallbladder, but all the associated organs with the gallbladder line. All right, so I'm going to move back now, and we are going to start our practice. And I will talk to you throughout, and I'm going to time the poses, because we're going to stay in each pose for a while. All right, you're going to start off on your back. And... You can see I've got all sorts of supplies here. I've got a bolster, I've got blankets, I've got a block. You want to lay comfortably on your back. If you need something under your low back to make this pose accessible, go ahead and do that. We're going to have our knees bent. And you're going to do what's known as, in, in other traditions, it's known as reclined pigeon. 
It's not called reclined pigeon in the yin tradition. <laughs> it's actually called thread the needle. So I'm gonna put the bolster underneath my low back because I have some low back issues. And I am going to cross. So I'm lying down. Now I also take something, a tiny little blanket and put it under my head. And I'm going to come into some sort of settling pose here. And let's just take a minute and settle into this pose. This is not the pose we're doing, but we're just settling into the earth. And a great way to ground yourself here is to just take a little quick observation of what's going on. Start with your mind. You could even give yourself a a rating of one to 10. One meaning you're feeling lethargic and don't have a lot of energy or a lot of thoughts going through your mind. And 10 means your mind is racing, you're thinking about what you're making for dinner, you're thinking about the weekend plans. Hopefully we'll bring you somewhere in the middle. And then just do a quick check over your body just notice any places in your body that are speaking to you, that are drawing your attention there. Usually when our attention is drawn to a place in the body, it's because we have something not feeling right. But just take notice of it. And lastly, go ahead and take notice of your breath. We're not changing the breath at this moment. We're just noticing it. Is your breath coming deep, pushing your belly out, and then retracting your belly? Or is your breath way up here in the chest? After you've noticed it, then go ahead and see if you can direct your breath by making it a little deeper. Going back and forth. My stopwatch is going off. <laughs> okay, so go ahead now and cross your right leg so that your ankle is actually laying on your left thigh. And then draw these legs either towards your body, reaching your hands through to grab your supportive leg or if you like to, you can stretch that leg up to the sky. Now for some of you, you're not even gonna need to draw your leg up. It's enough sensation just to have the leg down. This is thread the needle, but you have to make it work for you at the level of sensation that's appropriate. So whichever one of these levels of sensation are appropriate, you will Find your way into that. And then remember the principles of yin. You come to that first edge of sensation or resistance. It should feel like a dull ache, not a sharp pain. You commit to some stillness and staying with this sensation and focusing on your breathing. Now, obviously, this practice is a practice that is designed to quiet everything down. We can't expect in the middle of a work day on a Friday for our mind to immediately quiet down. But what you could do is just observe. Observe the thoughts. Step one in controlling the racing monkey mind is actually becoming a witness to what the mind does when you're in these yoga poses. You have about 30 seconds left in this pose on this side. We're gonna be working one side at the time, at a time. The gallbladder meridian goes all up and down 
both sides the outer edge of your leg. Now, you might be thinking, well, I don't have a gallbladder, or the gallbladder is only on one side. Why would I have meridians on both sides? But these are energy channels in every one of the meridian lines. You have two of them. You always have an equal right and a left one. All right. So go ahead and very gently release this pose. You might want to do something like put both legs up in the air and maybe gently move the feet around. Some of you might just want to stretch completely out on the ground and just rest a minute. So between each pose, you have a choice of whether you need to do gentle movement or complete stillness, whatever your body is asking you to do to neutralize. So now I'm going to stretch completely out. And we're going into half moon pose on the ground. Now I'm going to stand up to show you this just for a second because you might not be able to get what I'm doing when I'm seated. But you're making yourself well, you know what I'll do? I think I'm going to have my legs this way now. I think you might be able to see it if I do it this way. So we crossed our right leg over. So now what we want to do is we're still working this right side of the body. And my right side is going to look different than yours. I'm not mirroring you. So I want to draw my left leg a little over to the left. Again, you're going to look different than me. You're going to look the opposite and then draw my right leg over toward it. Now this might be enough sensation right here, first level of sensation, but some of you might be saying, I don't feel anything. If you don't feel anything, you could cross your leg over or you could go further out. Literally, you're making yourself look like a moon on the ground. So now I'm drawing my upper body toward the same direction. So I'm like a banana or a moon lying down, but you have to make sure both hip bones are on the ground and both shoulders are on the ground. So if this is too far for you, back off. So hopefully you can see that I look like a banana or a moon, and this is your pose for the next minute. This one we don't hold quite as long especially because I've been talking to you for part of it. <laughs> All right. So you should feel a lot of sensation up and down the right side of the body. Again, we're working this energy channel. This is the meridian that goes all the way from your foot, goes up the outside of the leg, then comes in through the organs, and the gallbladder meridian comes all the way up through the shoulder and into the side of the head. So if you've ever been to an acupuncturist or have had that done on you, you know that they'll put a needle somewhere completely different than you would expect them to for, for working an issue, but they're, they're working the channels, your energy channels that lead to these organs. All right, so to get out of this, you have to move very fragilely back to the middle. So I would take my right leg and slide it a little bit, meet up with my left leg, slide my right leg again, meet up with my left leg, draw my upper body to the middle, and then maybe you want to just lay here flat, or maybe you want to draw knees into the chest. You decide what you do to neutralize. So we're returning back to the first position on the other side, which is the crossing the leg over. So I'm going to come over to the side again. Last time I had my right foot over my left thigh, so then this time I'm having my left foot over my right thigh. So back to that original position, cross it over, decide where your first level 
or edge of sensation is. And then go ahead and commit to stillness. Commit to your breath. Commit to observing what is going on both with your body and your mind when you do a still position. The interesting thing about yin is it really does show us how hard it is to be still for many of us. And yet, it's such a wonderful tool to have when things seem to be going cuckoo around you and you need to remain in a calmer state to be able to think clearly and figure things out. The other thing this does is it slows our nervous system down and can draw us from that fight and flight feeling into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. So during this COVID crisis, many of us have had digestive issues or trouble sleeping and a yin practice can really help with that. You have about 15 seconds left in this pose. So go ahead and release the pose. Maybe feet up in the air if that feels good maybe knees toward the chest if that feels good, or possibly even stretching out completely. So this is your chance to gently release the pose, but allow your body to recuperate between the poses. So once again, I'm going to turn around and we're going into the half moon pose on the other side. So this time you are trying to stretch your left side body so you'll draw your right leg a little bit off to the side and meet up with it with your left. Now, I'm already at my first level of sensation. I can feel this tugging around my left hip. So I'm going to remain here. If you're not feeling any sensation, you could either cross that leg over or go further off to the side. Again, being aware that your hips are staying on the ground. Now we want our upper body to lean over toward the same direction, making you look like a banana or a half moon. And then you go back into committing to stillness and noticing your breath and noticing anything, any sensations that are coming up in your body. You should be feeling the sensations all up and down your left side of your body where that other gallbladder meridian is. So we are stimulating the flow of lymph throughout this meridian, hopefully clearing any blockages. so that everything flows a little more smoothly. Notice your breath. Notice any sensations. Go ahead and gently release that pose. Come back to the center slowly treating yourself very very much like a fragile doll take a moment here you could either draw knees into chest put legs up in the air 
Or my favorite neutralizing pose after doing two sides like that is bending my knees, placing my feet slightly wider than hip distance, and then putting my hands over my head on the ground and allowing my legs to slowly windshield wiper side to side. This is a really nice way to realign your pelvis and still gently stretch that area where those meridians are. It's really a lovely neutralizer. One of my favorite poses. All right. <sighs> So how are you feeling? Are you feeling okay? <sighs> We're gonna move into just a couple of basic seated yin poses. Yin, probably the most famous yin pose is really a forward fold, <laughs> any sort of forward fold. And so in a yin version of a forward fold, you would want to use some props again. And I'm going to get myself up on a cushion. So by doing that, I'm allowing my, my hips to tilt forward. And then for me, I'm going to place something under each knee because I'm doing a wide-legged forward fold. And for me, sometimes when I bring my legs off to the side, I get cinching on the outer edge of my hips. And then the other thing you could do, I have another pillow here. I, you can't have too many props in yin. You literally build up props so that you're able to access the pose. So now I've got, I've lifted the floor up a little bit and I'm literally trying to come to that first edge of sensation in a forward fold. And if, you know, again, some of you might just be leaning over with your head on the ground. Never happened for me, not even with all these years of yoga. But so what I end up doing is I end up supporting my head with my hands to rest my neck. And we're staying here for a couple of minutes. So only go to your first edge of sensation. You do not want to be having shooting pains while you're leaning over like this. Notice if this is being felt in your low spine. You really don't want it to be felt in your low spine. You want it to be felt in your hip area and in your thighs. And you want to see if you can soften everywhere else. So let's go ahead and commit to softening. So I'm going to give you a breathing practice to keep your mind off of staying in this pose so long. I want you to imagine that you are inhaling up the front of your body, starting at your belly, climbing up to your ribs and then your chest. And you can even imagine the inhale going up around your head. And then you're imagining that you're exhaling down your back body. So it's kind of a conveyor belt breath. Inhaling up the front, exhaling down the back. Inhaling up the front, exhaling down the back. Keep that flow on your own. Again, notice any sensations. You don't want to stay in a pose if you're having shooting pain, but you should be feeling something, a dull kind of ache. Committing to stillness. 
committing to keeping your attention right here on the mat. No matter what's coming up, you're noticing it, but you're just observing it as if you're eyewitnessing something outside of yourself. You have about 15 seconds left. Very gently. This is really where you have to move as if you're fragile. Coming up from a forward fold that you've been holding this long. Take your time. <sighs> Remove any props from out of your way. Draw your feet toward each other. Carefully, slowly. You might need to rub yourself down a little bit here. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I need to like tap out my legs a little bit, give myself a rub down, just like, okay, wow. That was for a pose that looks so calm. That was a lot of sensation, right? All right. Oh, let me get my little cheat sheet and see what I had next for you. Okay. All right, we'll do shoelace now for most of us full shoelace is not accessible i will show you full shoelace but then we're probably going to do half shoelace and this time i will try to mirror you so um, have both legs stretched out take your um, left leg and bend it and then your right leg and bend it over. Now, already I can tell you, I'm not gonna be able to stay in this position. It's just too much torque on my knee. So I have to straighten out the leg underneath. So I'm only doing half shoelace. So my left leg is straight, my right leg is bent with my knees trying to be close to stacked. So this is half shoelace, got it? All right, now if you're doing full, again, more power to you. Um, <laughs> that means the other leg is bent back. And then I want you to maybe grab some props, if you have any pillows, blocks or something. And I'm literally going to try to lean over toward my left, like this. So you should, again, feel a huge amount of sensation around your right hip. And you see I'm supporting my head and then settling into this pose. So let me get the timer going. Ah, notice any sensations. You might need to sigh a few times. Sighing is a great way to Get yourself into that relaxation mode. Ah, just sigh. You have about 20 seconds left. Now, some of you, although I don't, like to do yin poses this way. Some people like to get their arm over their head. I find that works better in a regular yang practice, not that much in a yin practice because that's a long time to be keeping that arm over your head. All right, release. Woo. Don't release the leg yet. See if you can gently, before we release the leg, Twist over to the right. Give yourself just a little twist here. 
Okay, then let that leg go. Ooh, a lot of sensation. Put your hands behind your back for a moment. And let's windshield wiper our legs slightly side to side to release some of that tension. Okay, so now you're straightening out your left leg, or if you, you know, it's funny because on this side, I can stack these two legs when I'm doing it this way. It's not great, but it's not horrible. I hope I'm doing the opposite leg. Am I doing the opposite leg? I think so. <laughs> okay. So most of us are straightening out the left leg, crossing the right leg over. And then we're putting our ledge or blocks that we're leaning on on this side now and leaning down and just kind of supporting your head and you should be feeling it on the other hip. Now, I, sometimes I have to fidget a bit before I get it right. And so fidget at the beginning until your body is ready to come into some place of stillness and then commit yourself to staying there. I feel like I'm doing the same side, but maybe I'm not. No, maybe I'm supposed to lean, I don't know. Oh well, it happens. Sometimes you get into this yin state and you just kind of go, ooh, which is kind of a nice place to be. But I think I am supposed to have the other leg over. Let's see. Yeah, I think I did it wrong, guys. Hopefully you figured it out. I feel like I did the same leg over. So if I, if I made you do the same leg over again, forgive me. <laughs> That's the problem when I try to uh, mirror my students, because now we want to twist toward this way. I think I had the same leg over. So after class is over, you all have to promise me you're going to do the other leg in case you did the same leg twice like I did. Ah, all right, let's go ahead and release that. Put our arms behind our back. Let's windshield wiper side to side. Whew, a lot of sensation. All right, let's see what else I wanna do with you. Whew. Oh, what I'd like to do now is actually show you one of the acupressure points. So one of the big acupressure points in the gallbladder meridian is called gallbladder 20. And it's located at the nape of your neck, right? In the depression between your trapezius and your sternomastoid. Okay, those are big words. Basically, you know this area that gets really sore and when you have a neck ache. So I want you to put your fingers and don't do it too hard and just kind of rub around there. It's a great place to rub when you have headaches and calm dizziness, obviously helps with neck pain, but it can also calm swelling and pain in the eye, common colds, nasal congestion. So this is one of the gallbladder meridian points that is considered a great acupressure point. In terms of its energy, it also subdues liver yang and it activates this whole meridian line. So we just activated a whole meridian line just by giving ourselves a little bit of rubbing. So that's what's so cool about yin. Yin involves things like this too. All right, go ahead and release that and just gently move your head side to side, see how it's feeling. So the next pose, can be a little challenging. 
And that's where these props will really come in. So it's gonna look a little bit like the pose that you see in a regular yoga class called pigeon, um, but we call it swan. And I use a lot of cushions under my hips when I'm doing this. Sometimes I even use two. And the other thing that I do is I, I put a blanket or a towel under my, where my ankle's going to be because this tends to, when you're laying on the side of your ankle, that can hurt too. So if you wanted to get into it, you could get into it from a downward facing dog. I'm not going to do a dog today, but you could start in a dog. And then once you're in a dog or just the way I'm doing it, I'm drawing and I'm not gonna to try to mirror you. I'm drawing my left, my right foot across my body like this. And you see where this thing is? It's under my butt and I'm sitting on it. Now I'm gonna show you this from the side too. This is an upward pigeon if, it, if you were doing a yang or an upward swan. Now, if you're already saying, this is a crazy pose, I can't do it, bend the back leg. So you can do this pose with a bent back leg if you do not wanna have that leg straight. So you can see now I've got it bent one leg back, one leg forward. If you're doing it straight, you're doing it like this. And that's where I need the cushion under my ankle. So I've got a bolster completely under my hips. I've got that leg completely back. And then you would commit to laying forward. It's great to have something to put your head on too. Now this is a very intense hip stretch but it's really working the gallbladder line. And again, you can keep that back leg bent if this is too much and just lean over like this. This still gets the same line and breathe. We're only gonna stay in here for about a minute. <sighs> so this is a very intense pose, you should be feeling some achiness around the hips, a little bit around the knee, as long as it's not sharp pain, some dull pain. And, and I, I do want to explain why in yin it's okay to experience a little bit more sensation around the joints. The way we are working the areas around the joints is we're actually creating just a small amount of stress. And small amounts of stress are needed for strength in life. Chronic stress is not good for it or too intense stretch, stress. So the kind of stress we're giving it through a yin posture is the, the kind of stress that builds up resilience. It's not the stress that breaks things down. So that's why it's relatively safe. All right, so let's go ahead and very gently come out of this pose. So my right leg is forward. Since my right leg is forward, I wanna stretch that right leg back to give it a rest. So I'm coming onto my hands and knees for a minute. I'm taking that right leg and I'm stretching it back, tucking the toes in and lengthening that leg so that it really gets a little release here before I set up on the other side. So since my right leg was forward before, this time my left leg will be forward. C grab that cushion. The cushion is for underneath your hips. Now, interestingly enough, on this side, I'm gonna probably need a second cushion under my hips because I have a bit of an injury. So I bent that leg, I'm taking, I'm cushioning under my hips. You can keep your right leg straight or bend it, you decide. And then you're gonna lean over the left leg into a reclined pose. This is called sleeping swan.
So notice your breath. Notice where you're feeling sensations. Observe any thoughts. Commit to stillness. All right, so very gently release this pose. You might be very fragile. When you're coming up, I'd like for you to take the left leg, which was the leg tucked in front, come onto hands and knees, and stretch that left leg all the way back. So that you're digging the toes in, lengthening that leg. Now, a lot of people find a downward dog after a series like that can be really, really neutralizing. If you don't want to do a downward dog, please don't do it. But if you'd like to, you would just stretch up and just gently sway side to side, just relaxing in this dog. Relax your head, neck, and shoulders. Don't, don't make this a dog, an active dog. This is a, this is a passive dog. <laughs> and when you've had enough of that, going to make your way down to a child's pose and a supported child's pose in yin would be you could support under your ankles you could support between the thighs and the calves and you could even support underneath your head and just settle down into this nice lovely child's pose and you could really just relax here and rest. I'm gonna, while you're in this pose, I'm gonna read you a little bit more about the gallbladder line and yin. So you just settle into this pose. So the gallbladder line, again, has 44 meridian points. Its element is wood. The gallbladder organ system stores and secretes the bile required to digest and metabolize fats and oils. Its energy provides your muscular strength and vitality. It controls the joints. It's very dependent on the liver, and it works with your lymphatic system to clear toxic products of metabolism from your muscular system, releasing ache and fatigue. So what's interesting is for the next 24 hours or so, you're going to have to drink a lot of water because you might have what's called delayed onset muscle soreness. It's like post-massage after you've done a yin practice. Go ahead and make your way onto your back to get rid of, to get ready for your rest. So be prepared that you, you will get some soreness tomorrow. If you drink a lot of clean water, you'll be flushing your system out of the toxics that we've just kind of released from this channel. If you don't, what happens is it just kind of gets back in, you know, it basically resettles in. So you want to flush yourself out, flush it out now that we've moved things around. <sighs> so I'm going to ring my beautiful Chris, uh, singing bowl to start 
your rest and then I'll ring it at the end of your rest. And in between, you just settle in and just notice how you feel. rather soft way to have you start to begin to come back into this beautiful space. Wiggle fingers and toes, do a full body stretch, and gently make your way up to a seated pose. So in our very young lives, go, 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 we all need a little yin. So hopefully I've given you 45 minutes of yin today that can carry you through 